two funk of failure. <laughs> Leave one little gap in there, but I thought it worked. That sounded good, I think. That gap. Yeah. Work with the drums. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Right. A lot of people were asking me about how I record my guitars, how do I get my sound, and I do appreciate it, it means a lot. So I decided to make this video and explain my signal chain for this album. Let's roll the intro. <laughs> What's up YouTube and guitar people, Hovac here, and today I'm going to show you guys how I recorded the Octavision guitars. Because the recording is complete now. Finally. This was a highly requested video. People were messaging me on my Instagram asking to share some tips and tricks. So I decided that this is a good time for it. Now I'm sure many of you will ask, what is Octavision? Octavision is my first ever progressive metal project which includes musicians that you may have heard of. You know, I wrote the names down so I don't forget, so I'm gonna read it. Um, Victor Wooten, Billy Sheehan, Jeff Scott Soto, Steve Weingart, Murzo, Roman, Lo Lo Roman, what was his name? Roman Lomtadze, Avo, and yours truly. Okay, let's move on. So the new album will drop in a few months. Currently everything has been recorded and we are in the editing and mixing phase. The link to our first single is in the description, so check that out. For the first release track, I recorded my guitars using my Mesa Mark V and miking the Mesa cabinet with an SM57. Which was great, it sounded great, but it wasn't convenient at all. Now the rest of the album I recorded using my Orange Rockover 100 Mark III, that's a long name, going into the Two Notes Torpedo Studio. Now that's what I call convenience. Torpedo Studio is a digital load box. It takes the signal from your speaker output and somehow converts it to a digital cap. I don't know how. Does some magic somewhere and makes it sound amazing. That's it. That's all I know. That's all I care. It has a huge selection of speakers, mics, rooms, and many other things like effects and stuff. Now, since I'm writing and recording all my guitars in my home studio, there's a couple of reasons that I want to point out. First, the amp sounds at its best after a certain point, when you crank up the volume. Not too much, but high enough to have a nice tube and output transformer overloading. But that amount of volume is loud enough for my neighbors who live a couple blocks away to call the law enforcement which happened. Not a lot, but it did happen a few times, so it's no fun. Second, you cannot have the room locked and not touch the mic for months. It's just not possible, especially when you have kids in the house. And as you know, even the tiny move of the microphone is going to change the sound, and we're not getting the old sound back. Not gonna happen. So having a cabinet-free setup is super convenient, because I'm moving things a lot, especially when I'm shooting my YouTube videos, moving the lights, trying different setups, and in general, it's not a commercial studio. Things get moved a lot. It's just how it is. Now let's move to the mixing desk so I can show you my signal chain, my torpedo setup, and the Pro Tools settings. Let's go. All right, so before we dive into the Pro Tools session, let me explain you guys my signal chain. This is my main desk, and from all this amazing equipment, I only use five pieces to record my guitars. The UAD Apollo, Torpedo Studio, and three Avedis Audio preamps. Now let's move on. It all starts with a good DI, because it is crucial to have your clean DI sound in case you have to reamp it later. It will save you a good performance and a lot of time, trust me. All right, let's start from the beginning. So you connect the guitar to the DI input. Then you take the copy of the clean signal from the DI through and connect it to the front of the amp. Then you take the speaker cable and connect the physical speaker output to the speaker input of the Torpedo Studio and make sure that the ohm setting matches your amp's speaker output's ohm value. Then from the analog outputs 1 and 2 we are going into the preamp 1 and preamp 2. 
Obviously, instead of going with two cabinet setup, you can use just one cabinet and go with one DI and one preamp. It's going to be absolutely fine. The second cabinet just adds a little bit of extra thickness, that's all. All the leads are recorded with only one torpedo channel and one DI. Alright, now we take the clean signal from the DI out and connect it to the third preamp. And then I connect all three preamps to the Apollo interface. That's what my signal chain looks like for this record. Obviously, you are free to use any other equipment you want. There are many options in the market for DIs, preamps, audio interfaces. Maybe you don't even need a separate preamp and you're happy with the stock preamps of your interface. That's completely fine. At the end of the day, it's what makes you happy that matters. So just use whatever you can and go make some good music. All right, now let's open the Pro Tools session and see how everything is done there. All right, so now we're gonna create nine mono audio tracks, two mono aux tracks, and one stereo aux track. And I'm gonna explain everything in a minute. The first track is gonna be my DI sound. Second is my torpedo channel one, and the third one is my torpedo channel two. And I'm gonna change the color coding to red so it's more organized. Then I'm gonna rename the next track as my DI left, then torpedo one left and torpedo two left. And I'm gonna rename my first mono aux track to guitars left, as it's gonna be panned hard left and control everything on the left side. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the right side. And once again, the left side tracks are being controlled by guitar left aux and the right side tracks by guitar right aux. Next, I'm gonna rename my stereo aux track as guitars and route my mono aux tracks to the stereo aux track so I can control both of them with just one fader. And if I use any EQ or compression on the stereo aux, it's gonna apply to all my guitars. It basically becomes a master track for my rhythm guitars. I'm also gonna group the two mono auxes together because you wanna have the same volume on both sides. And if I change the volume on one side, the other side is gonna be changed automatically. I'm also gonna group my audio tracks together for the same reason. Plus, if I make some cuts or crossfades, it's gonna apply to all three tracks and save me a lot of time. And of course, the same for the other side. Now, let me bring the mixer in so you can see how the faders work together. All right, now let's open a real session and I'll give you guys a sneak peek of one of the songs. As you can see, everything looks the same, just like I explained in the empty session. All right, let's check it out. That was the whole process and I hope you guys enjoyed it. And after watching this video, if someone walks out of the room feeling learned something new, then that will make me feel proud and accomplished. Let me know in the comments below. And as usual, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.